Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us today for the opening statement of the 18th Annual Meeting of the Internet Governors Forum. Now, I would like to invite the United Nations member. First, I would like to ask His Excellency, Mr. Suzuki Junji, Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, Government of Japan, to deliver his statement. So, Mr. Suzuki, you have the floor. Mr. Jun Ha Lee, UN Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. Ms. Vera Yolova, Vice President, European Commission. Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin, Secretary General, International Telecommunications Union. His Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Al Sahal, Minister, MCIT, Saudi Arabia. Dr. Jim Rai, Dean of Graduate School of Media and uh, Governors, Keio University. Ms. Uh, Tripati Singha, Board of Directors, Chair, ICNN. And His Excellency, Mr. Björgen Jelsvik, Norway. Norwegian a Minister of uh, Local Government and Regional Development, Mr. Vint Cerf, uh, Chair of uh, IGF Leadership Panel, Mr. Bjorn Berge, Deputy Secretary General, uh, Council of Europe, Judge uh, Elia Mani Talkaika, High uh, Court of Justice, Tanzania. Ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon to you. It gives me a great pleasure and a privilege to welcome so many of you to the Internet Governance Forum, forum where various stakeholders from around the world gather together to discuss a wide range of issues related to the Internet, which Japan is hosting for the first time. On behalf of the host country, I would like to welcome you to Kyoto. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to the United Nations and all those who were involved for the leadership of the forum over the past 18 years. In the three decades, the Internet has become so pervasive that it has transformed the way we live, work, and communicate. Today, over the Internet, a variety of services and contents are being provided transnationally. As such, the Internet has become the la an indispensable infrastructure for our daily lives and economic and social activities. It allows access freely to diverse forms of expression, knowledge, and news from around the world and serves as the foundation of democracy. During the 18 years since the inception of this forum, many innovations have been born and services that are provided over the Internet keep growing in its diversity and importance. We believe that it is highly significant that this forum, which discusses the Internet in depth, has its basic philosophy, the emphasis on the open, democratic, and inclusive process. When discussing ever-evolving topics such as the Internet, this basic philosophy with multi-stakeholder approach to bring all to this dialogue on equal footing will be the source of fruitful outcome. The Internet that is free and undivided will lead to a free, prosperous, and democratic future. I'm hopeful, confident that this meeting in Kyoto will lay the foundation for that future. Japan wishes to make a contribution to this meeting as a host. Benefits of the Internet can only be enjoyed when telecommunication infrastructure is ready and readily available to all, while highly correction, high quality, low cost access is currently available to many around the world. It is also true that there are still people who are yet to be connected to the Internet. At the same time, we must anticipate future technological innovation and plan as to how we can develop more advanced networks and put such innovations into practice car application. 
Of course, uh, we must not turn our eyes away from the negative effect of the Internet, spread of illegal and harmful information, including disinformation, cyber crimes such as phishing scan and uh, cyber attacks. These serious challenges uh, are the impacting our society, and we need to work together. This year, the overarching theme of the annual meeting is the Internet we want, empowering all people. Under this theme, to ensure that no one is left behind and that all people can enjoy the benefits of the Internet, I hope very much that you will have a fruitful discussion on what a wide range of stakeholders should do. Lastly, the place that you are in today, city of Kyoto, let me inform you, has flourished as a center of Japan for centuries and has a rich history and tradition that are living and practiced even as of today. So I hope you will find time in between the sessions or after your serious discussion will end for the day to enjoy culture, cuisine, and art of welcoming visitors of Kyoto and Japan. I would like to conclude my opening remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to ask Ms. Vera Yurova, Vice President for Value and Transparency, European Commission, to deliver a statement. Ms. Yurova, the floor is yours. Dear Minister, dear guests, dear members of the Internet Governance Forum community, thank you for giving me the honor to address you following Minister Suzuki's inspiring words. I am glad that we are meeting today in beautiful Kyoto. This city has that unique combination of preserving the splendor of the past with the big promise of the future. And it is that the same combination that we must achieve when we think about today's internet. When the web was created, its founders envisaged an open, worldwide space where knowledge would spread, equality would rise by bringing down barriers, and freedoms would flourish. Alas, we all know it did not turn out exactly that way. Autocratic models of internet governance are on the rise around the world where the state is at the center and information flows are controlled and filtered. Rather than spreading knowledge of two people, the internet sometimes feels like a tool to extract knowledge about people. A tool that divides and where disinformation spreads, diminishing trust in our governance systems and in each other. The exponential growth of AI heralds great opportunities for human advancement, but also major risks if we don't learn our lessons and act very, very swiftly. But just as Kyoto has managed to do, our multi-stakeholder community can preserve the purity of the past while addressing the challenges of modernity. Now is the time to defend a vision of the Internet that remains open, accessible, where the freedom and dignity of the individual is fully respected. This is not a matter of ideology or block mentality. This is a matter of whether or not the UN Charter will be upheld in the 21st century. This is the aim of the Declaration of the Future of the Internet launched in April 2022 and now signed by 70 countries. I would like to use the opportunity and encourage those of you who have not signed to consider joining. And these are the values the EU will promote within the Global Digital Compact launched by the UN Secretary General. 
I am also happy to confirm at this place that under the leadership of Minister Suzuki, today we have agreed to launch the stakeholder consultations on the draft of the guiding principle for generative AI and also with the feedback received from the multi-stakeholder community, we will be finalizing the code of conduct for endorsement by G7 leaders still this year. All developers of generative AI will be invited to sign up. We see this as a strong basis to ensure safety, acting as a bridge until regulation is in place, the EU is now finalizing our AI Act, which will ensure principles will have legal force. Ladies and gentlemen, 2024 will see the largest number of citizens participating in democratic elections in memory. Citizens have a right to make informed decisions and not to be manipulated through deception, especially by foreign states. The EU is taking action through the Anti-Disinformation Code of Practice and the Digital Services Act. We show that there is no contradiction between protecting freedom of speech and ensuring a safe and fair online environment. Yesterday, we had an eye-opening panel debate. I believe the UN has a role to play, and this is a topic that should feature strongly in the global digital compact. Dear friends and colleagues, the challenge ahead of us cannot be underestimated, but sometimes by looking at the past, one can take inspiration for the future. This is what Kyoto feels like for me. And this is what I hope we will all take away from this year's forum. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. So next, the ITU Secretary General, Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin, was scheduled to speak next, but we had to change the order slightly as the next two speakers has to go to the urgent meeting. So next, I would like to ask His Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Al Saha, Minister MCIT Saudi Arabia, to deliver a statement. So, Mr. Al Saha, the floor is yours. Your Excellencies, esteemed guests of IGF 23, the world that we live in today has so much polarization and fragmentation, both when it comes to the analog world and the digital world. In the traditional economy, fragmentation and international trade barriers are costing us close to 7% of the global economy. That's $7.4 trillion worth of missed opportunities. This is translating into a loss of more than 100 million jobs. And collectively, this is posing an impact on our ability to achieve net zero, yielding a gap, a funding gap of close to $3.5 trillion. Digitally, the situation with generative AI could be 10x better or worse. The choice is ours to make sure that we deliver the internet that we all deserve, empowering all people. With generative AI, we could see things worsening, like the polarization when it comes to digital trade. As 50% of them today are digital, we could be seeing challenges such as misinformation and disinformation that is impacting the globe today by $80 billion grow by a 10x fold. And last but not least, we could see this impact delaying our ability to close down the digital divide. This is why we propose today as part of IGF 23, and we continue this dialogue in Riyadh IGF 24, to come together to deliver an internet governance framework that is inclusive, innovative, and indisputably engraved in multi-stakeholderism in partnership with you. When it comes to inclusivity, we must leave no one behind. 2.6 billion people are still not connected, 
And this is why we take the great pleasure of working with Doreen and with the ITU on making sure that we connect the unconnected world by 2030. We've worked together on a study in 2020, and the cost is going to be so big unless we come up with a new disruptive business model. It's going to cost us a half a trillion dollars to connect the unconnected world from the ground. And this is why we're working with the ITU and with you, our multi-stakeholders, to make sure that we can deliver non-terrestrial networks to connect the unconnected from the ground and from the skies. When it comes to innovative regulation, we need to move from a world of regulate and innovate or innovate and regulate to innovative regulation. And this is why under the guidance and leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, we have launched the largest generative AI acceleration and sandbox called Gaia. Within this sandbox, we have invited more than 50 startups from 50 nations and placed $200 million to solve and tackle challenges such as bias, such as ethics, and such as hallucination. Last but not least, this governance framework has to be engraved in multi-stakeholderism. And we took the pleasure to join hands with you during the toughest year that humanity has seen in 2020, where we hosted the IOs, the Internet Society, governments and business leaders, and were able to pledge during that year $5 trillion to safeguard the economy, $20 billion to accelerate the push on science and technology towards a vaccine, and more critically, support Japan in delivering the data free flow with trust and adopt with OECD the AI framework for a trusted and worthy AI. This brings me to my end of my speech, but I would like to conclude with an open and candid invitation. Let's make sure that during IGF 23, we open up the dialogue and the cooperation to deliver the internet that we all need and deserve, empowering all people, and we look forward to welcome you to deliver cohesive and collective action and impact and consensus on this agenda in IGF Riyadh 24. And I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to ask Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin, Secretary General, ITU, to deliver a statement. So, Ms. Bogdan Martin, the floor is yours. Excellencies, distinguished ministers, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. It's an honor for me, as I would say, a longtime friend and supporter of the Internet Governance Forum to address you for the first time as ITU Secretary General. Let me commend Japan for hosting the IGF and for placing digital high on the agenda for the G7 summit in Hiroshima, where ITU had the great pleasure to contribute as a digital technology partner in the ministerial track. Digital technology is dominating global conversations from the G7 to the G20 to the G77 to last month's UN General Assembly. The world is turning to digital technologies to tackle our most pressing global challenges. One number captures the significance of this moment more, I think, than any other. That's the percentage of sustainable development goal targets that directly benefit from these technologies. The ITU puts this number at 70%, 70%. It's a major takeaway of the SDG Digital Acceleration Agenda that we launched with UNDP 
during the SDG digital event that was held in New York just prior to the UNGA High Level Week. I think this is game changing as we know that only 15% of the SDG targets are on track and we know that AI, if harnessed safely and responsibly, actually has a multiplier effect. But ultimately, the measure of success will hinge on our capacity, ladies and gentlemen, to deliver these technologies to everyone, everywhere. Right now, as we just heard from His Excellency Minister Osprecha, 2.6 billion people are offline, digitally excluded, too many nations, too many women, too many vulnerable groups find themselves on the wrong side of the digital divide. Not to mention those that struggle with access to basic digital infrastructure, while a select few benefit from the latest in AI technologies. Is this the digital world we want? We can turn things around, and we can do that together. That's why the cooperation that was fostered by the World Summit on the Information Society is so important. What WISIS did by embracing the multi-stakeholder model in the face of shifting digital issues way back when in the early 2000s was actually very forward thinking. It was ahead of its time. IGF emerged as a crucial outcome of WISIS solidifying its role as a multi-stakeholder forum for global digital governance issues. The other critical outcome, the annual WISIS forum, has complemented this process well by focusing on grassroots digital development. The discussions taking place at the IGF and the WISIS forum are fundamentally interconnected. In the same way that the WISIS action lines and the SDGs are inextricably linked. As we look to next year's Summit of the Futures, I think we have a once in a generation opportunity to shape the digital world that we want, one that empowers us all. I'm pleased that the Global Digital Compact discussions are benefiting from the collective learnings that have been acquired through the WISIS IGF process. The WISIS Plus 20 review process is a time for us all to take stock, to understand the gaps, and to plan for the road ahead, the road to 2030. During the first IGF, back in 2006, one of the speakers compared the internet to a child, a child who is expected to change rapidly. And today, the internet has grown into one of humanity's most powerful resources. So ladies and gentlemen, let us bridge divides. Let us get the SDGs back on track. Let us write the next important chapter in the life of the internet. Let's do it together. Let's do it now and let's create the internet we want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to ask Dr. Jun Murai, the Dean of Graduate School of Me Media and Governance, KU University, to deliver a statement. Dr. Murai, the floor is yours. Uh, distinguished guests, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Kyoto, Japan. Uh, I really want to uh, welcome you here. Uh, in uh, this 2023, is going to be a very big year for the internet community in this country. So we hosted the ITF in the spring. We hosted the APNIC meeting in here and we are hosting an Internet Governance Forum in here. So that's my pleasure that uh, so many people visiting uh, this country and uh, sharing the wisdom about the future of the Internet and the issues of the Internet as well. <coughs> so uh, talking about the 
2023, the, I can uh, think about the historical uh, reason uh, of the internet development for the past uh, three decades, that uh, uh, maybe two decades, three decades. It's uh, you know, starting from the very few uh, number of us uh, working on a development, development of the internet. And at that time, uh, we said the internet was for us. I mean, we were, we've been developing the internet for the uh, community of the internet people. And then, you know, uh, I remember Vint myself uh, started to discuss in 1995 that the internet is for everyone uh, as a uh, Isaac uh, motto. But uh, actually, the in, even in the year 2000, the internet population was just 6% uh, of the world. It's now reaching to uh, 70%. And uh, then they you know, now we need to work together for the inclusion of the internet. And uh, during that history, I, I'd like to add uh, one more thing from a Japanese point of view. Uh, in 1995, we were suffered with a, a huge earthquake uh, in the Kansai area, this area. And uh, then in you know, that time was a very much the people recognized the internet and the power of the global collaboration to support the human life and the recovery from the disaster. So that time, 1905, was a very much a, uh, internet uh, initial year to this country. And uh, since then, uh, we suffered uh, several times with a big earthquake. And uh, every time, 2011, was uh, with a smartphone already uh, in there and the, uh, saving a lot of people's life and the, with the location information and everything. So uh, the last past uh, three years, we all were suffered with a global uh, you know, COVID-19 thing. And uh, that was uh, something that the people really understand the you know, meaning of the uh, video images, video conferencing, working remotely all over the world. Uh, this is accelerating, I think, uh, 10 times faster for the people to understand the benefit and the importance of the internet infrastructure as well. So uh, now the, we've been you know, discussing a lot about the AI and the new technology uh, relating to the internet. I think it's uh, really important that uh, whenever we are having and the, uh, the advanced uh, technology available to us, then uh, we're gonna think about the proper use of the technology. And uh, then uh, also, uh, we have an abuser of the technology. Cybersecurity is uh, one of the area that we should work together uh, for the to deal with the abuser of the internet technology as well. But at the same time, with the proper use of the technology of the internet, and we can work together for the ethical use of the internet as well. So I hope the, this opportunity, uh, we all get in together with a multi-stakeholder people uh, to discuss about the future of the internet governance then uh, we hope that uh, this uh, Kyoto meeting is going to be uh, uh, one of the startup time for the future ethical use of the internet environment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'd like to ask Ms. Tripti Sina, Board of Director Chia. ICANN to deliver her statement. So, Ms. Hart, the floor is yours. Dear ministers, your excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. 
It is a great pleasure to be here today at the 18th Internet Governance Forum in the beautiful city of Kyoto, Japan. The Internet, one of history's most transformative creations, has revolutionized the way we communicate, conduct business, access information, and connect with the world. With over 5 billion of the world's 8 billion inhabitants online, we are now more interconnected than ever. Recent global events like the COVID-19 pandemic have underscored how vital the internet is in our modern age. It has become our lifeline, connecting us to essential information, education, and most importantly, to each other in times of crisis. In essence, the internet today is a critical resource and access to it is a fundamental human right. At this forum, we've been tasked with contemplating the internet we want, empowering all people. While diverse backgrounds and cultures envision this future, a universal desire emerges, an internet that is open, accessible, and inclusive, ultimately empowering all individuals. As we envision the internet we want, allow me to comment briefly on history, for as we know so well, the future is built on historical lessons, both good and bad. So I would urge you to keep some past principles sacred as we look to the future. One of the foundational principles upon which the internet is constructed are open standards, open architecture, interoperability, and I would add two more to the list, an open mind and imagination. It is these principles that the technical community sacredly embraced which served us well and created the amazing transformation that the internet is and the transformations that the internet itself has enabled. Indeed, it has changed our lives in the most remarkable of ways. So now I will share a few comments on what we want as the internet evolves. Our priority and the internet that we want is one of digital inclusivity, a future where anyone, regardless of location, language, socioeconomic level, or culture, can use the internet. The world has seen emerging, emerging economies flourish, education levels rise, and nations grow because of access to this global resource. Despite the internet's ubiquity in many parts of the world, significant portions of the global population remain unconnected. A lack of access to the internet impacts access to education, service, services, healthcare, and economic opportunity. Expanding access to the internet is not just a matter of developing the infrastructure. It requires addressing affordability, digital literacy, and the creation of locally relevant content and services. Governments, the private sector, and civil society must collaborate to ensure that every citizen, regardless of their location, or native language can reap the benefits of the digital age. We must advocate for participation by all stakeholders. The internet should be a bustling interchange of varied ideas and dialogues driven by active participation from diverse backgrounds and cultures, thereby reflecting the global internet community's multifaceted nature. Internet governance has organically evolved through an international multi-stakeholder process, uniquely addressing challenges in a user-developed network of networks. The multi-stakeholder model of internet governance is one that enables stakeholders from multi -se multiple sectors to come together in dialogue to share viewpoints and drive towards consensus-based decision-making. This approach of broad inclusivity and democratization of stakeholder participation has yielded a system of voluntary standards, best practices, cooperation, and trust. ICANN, deeply rooted in the multi-stakeholder model, emphasizes transparency, inclusion, participation, and expertise as imperatives for governing internet-related discussions. We strive for transparency and security. In a time where trust is vital, our commitment is to persistently develop and uphold the technical underpinnings of an open, secure, and resilient internet. Merging procedural transparency with robust data safeguards, establishing a foundation for a safer, user-friendly internet. As we pursue this critical mission, leveraging the multi-stakeholder model is crucial, requiring ongoing involvement 
from policymakers, academia, businesses, and civil society, beyond just the technical community, to foster a unified vision for the Internet's future. Guided by the Internet technical community, we must, alongside all stakeholders, advance towards our collective aim, the Internet we want. Our unified objective must be to sustain the Internet as a catalyst for good, a platform for change, and a pathway to a brighter, more interconnected future. Before I conclude, allow me to make a few comments on new technologies and our evolving digital experience. The past year has been marked by great innovations in technology that are bound to enhance the internet. We are now at a pivotal point in time with breakthrough developments in artificial intelligence or AI and advances in quantum technology and communications ready to transform or even redefine our digital experience. The potential of AI cannot be denied. We have yet to fully understand how this will shape and influence our lives. But one thing is clear, it will be globally impactful. Quantum technologies are similarly poised on the brink of innovation. These technologies serve as undeniable agencies of change whose outcomes and impact will rely on and be delivered by the power of interconnected networks, the internet. Let us persist in our collaborative efforts to forge a superior and luminous digital future, ensuring the internet remains a wellspring of inspiration, creativity, and prosperity. To close, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the IGF Secretariat and to our hosts for convening this meeting. I would also like to thank everyone here for your presence and contributions, which are integral to the success of this forum. Together and with an open mind, we can imagine and then create the internet we want, empowering all people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to ask His Excellency, Mr. Sigbjorn Gelsvik, Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, no way to deliver a statement. Mr. Gelsvik, the floor is yours. Ministers, Excellences, members of uh, Parliament, distinguished uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd like to thank the Japanese government for hosting this important forum here in the beautiful and historic city of Kyoto. Arigato gozai masu. The Internet Governance Forum has been a strong advocate for an open, accessible, and inclusive Internet since the first forum in 2006. It has provided a platform for stakeholders from various sectors and regions to collaborate and shape the Internet we want by empowering all people, which is the fitting overarching theme from our kind Japanese host. The impact of the Internet has never been more significant than it is today. IGF plays a central role as a facilitator and a forum for important discussions for governments, civil societies, the academic sector, the technical community, and the private sector. The Norwegian government supports the current forums and discussions and the willingness to include all stakeholders. While we endorse the existing structures, we acknowledge the need for continuous improvement and dialogue to address our concerns. As the strategic importance of the domain increases, there is a growing number of initiatives in the Internet governance sphere. But as a small state, we are concerned about the paradox of inclusion, which will ultimately give us uh, all a smaller impact 
on shaping the future of the Internet. As we struggle to deal with an increasing number of arenas and initiatives. We wish to contribute to keeping and developing the IGF as a vital and inclusive format and a meeting place for all stakeholders. That is why Norway earlier this year announced our bid to host the Internet Governance Forum in 2025. The small state perspective is a key to an inclusive, multi-stakeholder internet governance. With this in mind, we know that the major growth in internet users is happening in Africa and in Asia. The growing economies in these regions have an incredible opportunity to leapfrog into digitalization in both the public and private sectors by ensuring that the right enabling environment is in place. Norway will continue to work with both bilateral and multilateral partners and the private sector to stimulate investment in development, developing countries. Because the building of fundamental infrastructure is crucial for implementing digital technology. We know that digital solutions have a critical role to play in development. The DIA app has enabled Ukrainian citizens to access over 80 governmental services through smartphones. Adapting the service to the new reality and the needs of internally displaced people during a war was made possible because of the Ukraine government's commitment to digitalizing its public services. The government's capacity to respond to Ukraine needs during the war is a powerful reminder of how investing in development, reform and public administration is critical to crisis governance. Having the digital system in place, the technical know-how is uh, in the government, and the ability to scale up quickly is how we can ensure people get the right help in the right place at the right time. The current discussions on emerging technologies, such as uh, artificial intelligence, have shown us that techno uh, technological development is still not without risk. For the Norwegian government, it is an important priority to develop regulations that ensure that technological innovation and development are responsible, respecting human rights and privacy. The Norwegian, the Norwegian position is clear. Human rights are not only valid in the physical world, but also in cyberspace. To strengthen the multi-stakeholder model in the internet governance sphere, we need to keep working on the principles of no discrimination based on nationality, race, ethnicity, gender, sex, or economic status. After all, the internet should be a place where individuals can exercise their civil, political, economic, and social and cultural rights. Norway remains de dedicated to preserving and promoting these rights in the digital realm. Therefore, it's crucial to make IGF even more relevant by promoting more sharing of best practices and minimum regulations to give countries the necessary tools for development. All UN member states have supported the framework for responsible state behavior in cyberspace. We must continue to uphold the globally agreed ground rules, including the uh, applicability of international law in cyberspace. 
Sustainability is another main priority for Norway. We will seek innovative solutions to reduce the environmental impact of digital infrastructure and utilize the same infrastructure to reduce emissions in various sectors in society. Moreover, the IGF can facilitate dialogue on the role of digital technologies in addressing broader sustainable challenges. This includes using technology for climate change mitigation and adaption, sustainable agriculture, and smart cities. By sharing stories and innovative solutions, we can inspire and empower each other to use technology as a tool for sustainable development and for a better future for us all. We extend an open invita invitation to each of you to join us in strengthening the IGF. And I hope we will be able to welcome you all to Norway for the IGF in 2025. Together, we will strengthen diversity and collaboration, which is crucial for a vibrant and sustainable digital ecosystem. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to ask Mr. Finn Surf, Chair of the IGF Leadership Panel, to deliver his statement. So, Mr. Surf, the floor is yours. Oh, to be young again. First of all, it's a great pleasure to return to Kyoto, a beautiful city with a wonderful history and a place where our innovation and our deliberations, I think, will be inspired. I want to thank also, as others have, the uh, host country of Japan for its generosity and all of the planning which has gone into the IGF 2023. I'm very resonant with many of the comments made by the Prime Minister this morning. And as a member of and the chair of the leadership panel for the Internet Governance Forum, I'm looking forward to a very productive week. We've already had a very productive day zero, which, by the way, I resonate with as a programmer because everything should start at zero, not one. So we thank you for acknowledging that. Um, I think that the members of the leadership panel, you will see attending many of the sessions that are uh, planned, and I, there are literally some 300 of them, according to the last report I got from Chengatai Masango, who is the uh, head of the Secretariat. That's an enormous number. We won't go to all 300. We will go to as many as possible. We are focused primarily on promoting the ideas arising out of the IGF deliberations. And uh, we are hoping that their insights, your insights, will inform the decisions that are made by other bodies in the world that have an impact on the way in which the internet can operate. We greatly appreciate the work of the uh, multi-stakeholder advisory group, which organizes these meetings every year uh, in, uh, together with the Secretariat. And I specifically want to uh, call out and thank Paul Mitchell for his service as chair of the MAG. This is his outgoing year. And uh, could I call for a round of applause for the work that Paul has done? We anticipate with great interest uh, the work of the co-facilitators uh, in R Rwanda and Sweden on the, gov the uh, Digital Governance Compact. We've had an opportunity to meet with them. They are open to inputs, informal and formal, on their work. Uh, that work will continue, as you know, in, into 2024. Its outcomes are vital to all of our future with regard to the internet. We also anticipate the summit of the future and its conclusions, which I hope will also inform the way forward 
towards uh, the structure and operation of not only the internet, but also many of the other subjects, including the global warming challenges that we have. Uh, those are, must occupy us in the years ahead. I'm very eager as, as a member of the leadership panel to draw attention both uh, to the MAG, uh, the, the uh, multi-stakeholder advisory group, and to all of you as participants in the IGF to thinking beyond the internet we want. We are articulating the internet we want, but we won't get it unless we figure out how to get there. And so I want to strongly urge the IGF participants to start thinking more about how we will achieve the objectives that we have already articulated in uh, the internet we want, which uh, the leadership panel has also expressed what we believe is a consistent view with regard to uh, that subject. But we now must focus on how to get there, and that should be the outcome of the uh, IGF meetings in Riyadh next year and in the future as well. Uh, some people have used the term, the internet we deserve, and I worry that if we don't focus on the how, we will end up with the internet we deserve, but it may not be the one that you want. We must be alert to the risks and hazards of the, um, uh, the strong connectivity that the internet offers, and as has been said many times, that connectivity allows the spread of misinformation, disinformation, as well as all the other positive things that we know the internet can deliver and has delivered. So we must wrestle uh, with suppressing the, part, the um, useless information that shows up and focus on that which is useful, which means we are going to have to focus on both accountability and agency. Accountability for actions and agency to create and maintain a safe and secure and connected network. So uh, the, um, the leadership panel is looking forward to engaging with all of you during the course of this week and in the course of the year ahead. We also look forward to the national and regional IGF meetings, which are just as important as the annual one in terms of uh, focusing our attention on what needs to happen to the internet to make it a productive environment. It's very important for us to uh, incorporate experiences from those events as well as the one we have every year. So we are all on the leadership panel looking forward to a particularly productive multi-stakeholder week, and we look forward to seeing all of you this year and next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So next, I would like to ask Mr. Bjorn Berg, Deputy Secretary General, Council of Europe, to deliver his statement. So Mr. Berg, the floor is yours. Ministers, Excellencies, distinguished participants and guests. Some people in this room today will not be able to remember what life was like before the internet existed. The telephone booths, the printed encyclopedias, waiting for the postman to deliver handwritten letters. The opening up of the online world with its high-speed connections has changed all of this. Maybe it has even changed us. So much of modern life would grind to an instant halt if one day it simply stopped working. The internet is the transformative invention of our times. So it's indeed an honor for me to speak after Vin Cerf. Along with his colleagues, he pioneered internet and designed the protocols that determine 
how internet works today. The Council of Europe is an international organization made up of 46 member states. We recognized early both the opportunities and the threats posed by the digital world. That's why in 1996, we began negotiations for what became our Budapest Convention on Cybercrime. Today, 68 countries have joined it, and over 100 have used it as an inspiration for their domestic legislation. Helping them to combat crime online this treaty was indeed born in Europe, but is open to the world. Along with its two protocols, one on combating racism and xenophobia online, and the other on how to treat evidence on the cloud. Negotiating the Budapest Convention taught us the importance of a multi-stakeholder approach when regulating the digital world. With public authorities, of course, but also civil society, the private sector, and technical and professional organizations taking part. All their experience is needed, and we depend on them. I note that the Internet Governance Forum has embraced that inclusive approach. That is why we have been so supportive of it ever since its early days as the World Summit on Information Society 20 years ago. Of course, the advance of technology means that there is always more to do for the governments and others helping to set relevant standards so that innovation remains a force for good to the benefit of all. Artificial intelligence is both a pressing and pertinent example of this. Harnessing its benefits and mitigating its dangers is a defining challenge for all of us today. That's why the Council of Europe is now at work on an international treaty on the design development and use of AI systems. Negotiations on its content are underway. These include the 46 member states of our organization, along with our observer states, plus countries from outside Europe, and a range of international organizations, the private sector, professionals, as well as others. Again, a true multi-stakeholder process. We are open, welcoming, in fact, of others joining where they share our objectives and values, because our aim is to make this treaty as strong, relevant, and global as possible. And I hope we will be able to finalize the negotiations by May next year. So, dear friends, Finally, I want to express my deep gratitude to the excellent Japanese hosts and also the IGF Secretariat for organizing this important conference. Japan is renowned for its innovation, and this country is a perfect place to discuss how to make sure the Internet is an open, free, and global space for all. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to ask Judge Eliamani Laitaika, High Court of Tanzania, to deliver a statement. So, Judge Laitaika, the floor is yours. Honorable ministers, honorable members of parliament present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. 
Imagine there is a meeting taking place somewhere in some distant country or even some, somewhere in the outer space, but that would be too far. And uh, you nominate yourself, you go there, you meet fantastic people, they look friendly, and they are wonderful. But after a few minutes, you realize that you are different. You don't look and think like them. And they are in thousands. There are 5,000, 9,000 registered. What would you do? That's exactly how I feel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> because out of everyone here, I'm the only one who has this title of a bench holder. I'm the only judge here. So if you were my clients, imagine how many opinions I would write to send some of you to some places that are not pleasant. Uh, on a very serious note, I have realized that you are doing a very, very important process that impacts the rest of the world, but uh, you have not included the judiciary. Please allow me to speak on behalf of judges and magistrates around the world, but also our closest relatives the prosecutors. When I was invited here, the secretariat had some difficulties placing me in some track because it is the first time they have a judge who is interested in even delivering a speech. So they, are, they were not sure. Where does he fit? They ended up putting me in the parliamentarian track <laughs> so I shared the podium with members of parliament yesterday and it felt like being a, a, an attorney general <laughs> uh, because in uh, most of the commonwealth countries an attorney general is a judge who has served for some time then is taken to parliament and you can hear him answering questions. So yesterday, I acted for a few minutes like an attorney general and uh, basically delivered my speech. And uh, one of the panelists was the honorable member Florik from South Africa, reminded me of, uh, reminded us of the importance of moving together. He said, if you want to move very, very fast, go alone. If you want to move very far, go with others. I challenge everyone here to take this message very seriously and ensure that next year, God willing, if I am invited again to this wonderful uh, occasion, I don't feel lonely because honestly speaking, I have not had anyone who thinks like me <laughs> or who has, you know, uh, 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 this uh, kind of aspiration like I do. But why do we need judges in a uh, process like this? Number one, the lawmaking process ends with the judiciary. Everything you are discussing in parliament with think tanks is, remains more or less theoretical until a judge gives it, breathes life to it by saying this is the correct interpretation. It would be very sad for your process to fail to take off simply because a judge who is supposed to decide 
about an aspect of internet governance, uses a few minutes to strike out an entire application because they do not understand. And for your information, judges are never said that they don't know. You must say the honorable judge has slipped into error. So please don't allow us to slip into error. Kindly facilitate the IGF secretariat to probably establish a track for the judiciaries. Having, thank you very much, having seen that what you are discussing is impactful, it is meaningful, it goes down to the internet freedom, protecting, protecting children in the internet, ensuring a freedom of information, embracing AI, making the most of Web 3.2.0, 3.0. All this boils down to the rule of law in the digital space. We cannot advocate for the rule of law outside and then leave the digital space with judges who have no idea what internet freedom is all about. To conclude, some of you have heard that I come from Tanzania. If you are wondering where Tanzania is, on the map, is where the highest mountain in Africa, and actually the highest freestanding mountain in the world, Mount Kilimanjaro, is found. So if you cannot remember Tanzania and take this prayer of the judge, because we usually make orders. But today I make a prayer that kindly invite judges from your countries kindly push the agenda to ensure that judges in your countries are also a part of your national IGF and then UN IGF. This is from that judge from the land of Kilimanjaro and Zanzibar who happened to come from academia, who taught in a science university before and had participated in the national IGF. So I have a little bit of an idea of the incredible thing you are doing. And I can guarantee you that when I was appointed, I used some of the ideas I got from IGFs that I attended in my country to do what I did much better. So I want to thank you and wish you all the best and specifically thank the government of Japan in my previous training as an intellectual property lawyer, I read a lot about Japan. Very hospitable people, very innovative, and it was always my dream to come here. Seeing Minister Suzuki and uh, in the morning seeing uh, Prime Minister Kishida was like a dream come true that I can put in the face some of the big brands I was reading in inter international trademark law. And uh, with all participants also, thank you for enabling uh, Japan to showcase its hospitality to the world. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, we're now approaching to the end of the opening statements. Allow me to extend our appreciation on behalf of the United Nations and the government of Japan to all member states for your active participation and productive exchange of views. And before you are depart, kindly ensure you have all your belongings with you. And please also be sure to hand over your simultaneous receiver to the staff at the exit door when you leave the room. So tonight, the uh, music night is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. at the Prince Hall, located in the B2 floor of the Prince Kyoto Takaragaike, which is right next to this conference center. So please feel free to join our remarkable night. Once again, thank you very much for your attendance.